Hello and welcome to another episode of the Engadi and Gate series. I'm your host Jeremy D'Souza and today we've got an interesting guest, Jeremy Scrivens with us. But before we get into the interview, let's begin with a quick introduction of Engadi. Engadi is the world's leading multilingual no-code chatbot platform available across 14 channels with 25,000 bots created across 186 countries in every domain and use case. We run the Engadi blog and video channel, which gets upwards of 300,000 visitors annually. And now for our guest. Jeremy Scrivens is an appreciative futurist and collaboration and innovation catalyst. He's a director of the Emotional Economy at Work and a global thought leader and consultant on building collaboration in a digital world for innovation, social good, and the future of talent. He's particularly known for his work with enterprises to coach innovation, collaboration, and engagement at a scale in the physical summit room and in the virtual social room. He has a track record for growing global influence around thought leadership on the future of work. He's a, thought, he's a sought after speaker, transformation facilitator, culture catalyst, and future of leadership coach. Welcome, Jeremy. We're really thrilled to have you with us. I'm delighted to be with you, Jeremy. <laughs> so, should we get into the first question now? Sure, of course. How will AI and technology change the future of work for us? This new, t- this new technology, I call, I call it the new tech, the 4IR tech. What's different about it is that it is now converging data. We're moving into this age of technology con- convergence. Convergence means bringing everything back from the parts of things to the wholeness of things. Mm-hmm. And we've had technology that's been built for the parts of things for hundreds of years since the factory model of work started. And that, and so you had a particular, so when I was starting with HR, uh, in HR and HR tech, back in 1978, a uh, long time ago, you know, the tech then was built for a single function, right? A single problem to be solved. Um, uh, and it was to, you know, to solve a financial issue or an HR issue or whatever and work was separated from life, but the new tech is converging. Everything is converging together, single platform, single data sets. What that means is that it's bringing everything back to the wholeness of things, which means that we can start to see patterns that we couldn't see before because everything is connected. Um, By itself, the new tech does not um, change things for for better or or, or for worse. But what it does, it's so overwhelming, so significant in its potential that it forces us and forces leaders and businesses to make choices about what they do with the tech. And those those choices are quite fateful, actually. Okay, nice. Um, So next up, employees are practicing remote working right now around the whole world. How has this pandemic changed the way businesses are operating? And what do you think the scenario will be like, you know, after the pandemic? The, the word um, that we hear a lot associated with pandemic or with the virus is, is crisis. Yeah. So we are now moving into, into a crisis. And, and, and one definition of the word crisis is the, uh, the, the, the it is the, the critical elements of a disease and the, and the time when the disease is running rife. Another element, another definition of, of, of crisis, which is not talked about very often in the dictionaries, is an opportunity to change, adapt, and grow. Yes, we grow only when we are uncomfortable, of course. Yes, this is significant disruption. Um, and so changes force a response. And that's why it's important, I, I would argue now, that we, we, we think about how we're going to respond to that choice. And I think this is a leadership issue right now. You know, uh, there's Professor Heifetz from Harvard University, who is uh, a great a great thinker and practitioner of, 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 of leadership, who talks about the distinction between technical leadership and, and leading a, an adaptive challenge. A technical leadership issue is where you, um, where, where you throw existing knowledge or, or a solution at something. So for example, we might throw, example, we might throw a chat box chat box solution at, 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 at a, a group of people um, who are who actually required to operate in a radically different way of working together. And that requires an adaption to behavior, to uh, to working from home where work and life are coming together. It requires a different conversation. It requires innovation. So I would argue that what we're seeing now is not so much whether the pandemic is going to change, change business, 
but how leaders will respond to that that uh, opportunity as a way to move from, in effect, leading from the parts of things, which is the technical fixing uh, and management uh, style of, of leadership, to one of convergence, which is an opportunity to bring a different conversation into play, one that looks at growth, not just survival. Okay, so uh, next up, how can conversational agents or chatbots help in engaging employees? How can it boost employee engagement? If we start with the chat box first, there'll be a limited take up of the technology. But if we start with the story first, <laughs> if we start with the kind of conversations we're having now and we look to form new forms of collaboration, if we engage people around social good causes and uh, a need to collaborate with others because they want to collaborate, yes? Because, because they want to, 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 they know that they need to bring each other's strengths into play in order to do something good to make the world a better place. Then the next question is what's, what tech okay. have we got that will enable us to take this journey well? And that's where the chat box solutions come in. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to suggest that the next generation of technology companies, and I'm sure uh, your technology company will be leading this, <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll start with the conversation around who we are and what we care about, and how can we collaborate, and what is the future story that we're going to create together, and then introduce the tech uh, in that order. That is the right way to do it, particularly now with the current, you know, because you take, for example, chat boxes. I mean, um, there's all sorts of tech out there, but we've had a first generation of enterprise social networks, ESNs, right, like Yammer. No disrespect to Yammer, or a whole bunch of them but they got, they got installed in organizations and no one did anything with them. They just sat there yeah. because, because we were driving the technology, driving adoption of the technology, not the, the, the future story of what it meant to make a difference together, enabled by the tech, if that makes sense. Yeah. So, you know, as Simon Sinek says, we have to start with why before we get to the whole what and the how. Start with who we are and then why. And, 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 what how, what difference can we make together now? You know, how can we be much more connected together? What what? Well, let's get time out. Let's spend time. Let's spend the next few months to get to know each other. <laughs> and if we do that, then the chat to chat. It's not just the chat box. It's the quality of the conversation on the chat box that matters. Absolutely. And that is what is what will make the difference. And of course, the best tech will come in behind it. But it'll be quiet. It'll be seamless. Um, but it will flourish. And people will then want to obviously buy the tech because they want to be part of the story. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, since uh, we're talking about you know getting to know each other better, and what do you think about uh, the need for authenticity on social media? Why is it so necessary? It's so necessary because um, human beings are meant to uh, be in connection with each other. We're meant to be in community with each other. I mean, I, I have um, been fascinated for about 10 to 15 years now with the uh, emerging young generation of talent, if we can call it that, your generation, I might add, um, that, I, that some call millennials or the next next one, I call I call your generation Generation G. So Gen G's Generation G stands for for globality. It stands for generosity. It stands for um, for um, co-generation. It stands for giving. It stands for sharing. It stands for standing up for the things that matter. It stands for social causes. Your generation on these smartphones have been wired to be able to look, to get information about what's really happening in the world from the sources, which are the people on the ground, not just the filtered information that comes from corporations or from governments or whatever. So, so and there's a natural, natural tendency towards connect. And your generation also ask why, and you question, you say, why is there social injustice? Mm -hmm. Why and they'll go walk into an organization and say, What are we doing? What are we doing about the homeless? 
What are we doing about domestic violence? What are we doing about poverty? And, and, and they will want to be involved in their own social good causes. I, I call that hashtag me. And so, so, so you can, as a young, young talent, uh, talented person now, you can start your own social movement. You, you could be connected. I look at all the resumes, Nora. I look at, enough, I look at the resumes of your generation. Uh, um, and I look at what you've got on your on your LinkedIn resumes. You talk about social good projects. You talk about being involved in your communities. You talk. You're grounded. You're connected. You're not just in an organisation doing work. You don't switch off your heart when you get to work. Mm -hmm. So, so being authentic means being who you are and sharing openly and honestly and connecting with people in ways that will make the world a better place. The word social media, again, is the wrong term. I use the word social room now. So, so I've had the privilege in the last three years of working with three or four very interesting organizations, businesses, to start up their social rooms, which are social room startups with a host team of five or six or eight young, young generation Gs yeah. who are all writing about their own social justice issues like poverty, um, like, like um, sustainability, like climate change, but also things like gender equality, um, e equity, equity in work, equity in health, these kind of things. And so, so, so I think this is now an opportunity for, for businesses to actually uh, encourage their people whilst they're at home, to engage even more authentically with their own communities and say, how can we, on the Facebook pages and Instagrams, and say, hi, I'm in the community now. How can, we, how can we work together? How can we help each other? How can we do life work together? So being authentic on social media is not about a business-to-business -business, uh, B2B proposition. It's about individuals being authentically connected as Jeremy and Jeremy. <laughs> Putting your own touch of personalization and humanity over there. The future of work starts with the individual, not the corporation. Social media was never meant to be B2B marketing. It's been hijacked in order to make a buck. It was never meant to be that. It was meant to be a connection that enabled people to be having conversations and, 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 and do stuff together, yeah? So it was more human to human rather than B2B. <laughs> there are two aspects of the technology, digital, Yes. So you've heard we've heard the term what it means to be a digital native. Yeah. So being, for example, able to use chat box, being able to look at the data, look at the look at the the the, the, the artificial intelligence, look at patterns. That's the digital side. That's the information side. But there's another part, social side, and the social side is about becoming what I call a social native, being able to connect and to play because work is now being connected as an individual in an ecosystem. And as an ecosystem is a living ecosystem of, of human beings that are connected, and that's like the new agility, yeah? And you can connect. For example, let me ask you a question. What do you care about, Jeremy? What do you care about? So personally, I care about personal growth as a thing. I actually had an entire social page dedicated towards that. It's to create videos and stuff around the topic. So you, so you, uh, 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 see, when I was when I was your age, I couldn't, I wasn't, I couldn't create anything. I didn't have the tools. I wasn't allowed to. It was broadcast. It was corporate. It was top down. We watched telly all day and interacted with it. That was the age of dominance. <laughs> A one way thing at that point. One, one, yeah, broadcasting. Yes. And it's bring, and so so social media is also about engaging the talents of the latent talents that exist in our, in our organizations and our communities to come together as social movements around causes now. And so I think in that sense, so for me being a social native is critical. Um, very important now to think about how we can do that even better than before. Absolutely. So what does digital technology have in the future for businesses? Any specific changes that it can bring, especially in the field of uh, human resources? I think there. I think there's two things. One is one is um, that that we we are moving into the age of convergence now. Mm -hmm. and what that means is that all things are connected. So I think again, uh, if I think about human resources, for example, I think we need to stop not not start with the HR tech in one sense, 
although that's the trigger, that's the tip, that's the tipper. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to reimagine what HR is. I think we need to think that beyond HR and, and recognise that HR is now, uh, the role of HR is to engage holistically with other other players uh, to, 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 to stimulate, encourage, and facilitate conversations and collaborations um, around the wholeness of things and to bring what I call the non-usual suspects into the room. So, so traditionally, so we know enough about innovation now to know, for example, that innovation is best done when you bring people into the room who don't come from that particular area. Yeah. So, so finance, if you want, you bring HR, you bring engineering, you bring operations, you bring all the disciplines together, and then you look for a cause that's bigger than the individual area. Something so, like so, a so, cross-functional thing. What do we care about together, yeah? Um, and I think going back, so HR for me now, I think the vision for HR for me is leading the conversations back to convergence and looking for and equipping the next generation of convergence leadership. And then uh, facilitating the use of the data in a convergent way. Mm -hmm. and, and, and if you, so their role would be to look at the patterns in data which are organization wide or ecosystem wide. You know, that for things like forecasting trends for the future, but also to 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 put the data in the hands of every individual, <laughs> and, and to create those pathways in the communities where people can form what I call the new communities of talent, the ecosystems of talent, which move beyond. We live in an age now where HR managers are pointed to single enterprises. That will not. That that is anachronistic now. I think it'll still be around for a while, but the true HR managers are those that will move into uh, being part of supporting and growing talent ecosystems, which are beyond the individual, the life of the individual enterprise or its boundaries. Absolutely. Um, innovation, collaboration, engagement, even convergence. How crucial are these for, well, literally any business on the planet? And how can it help these businesses become more competitive? Well, change, change, is, is the, change is the new norm now. I mean, gosh, we've seen this with, uh, I'm, I'm now talking about beyond, beyond coronavirus into convergence, right? Um, and, and I think, um, so, so innovation used to be in the hands of a few people. It was Gary Hamill, Professor Gary Hamill, who said a few years ago that, that innovation is, that we're moving beyond the age of continuous improvement into the age of innovation. And I, and I fully agree with him. But innovation is the work of everybody. <laughs> so, so, so in order to innovate, again, we need to get innovate from the whole. So I, I, I do a lot of work with the priesthood inquiry, the whole system in the room. I bring organizations together to create topics for growth and then to work with the world. It was a mushroom farm with 60 people or, 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 or a water facility, a utility with 800 people in the room. But together, they, they come together and they, they, they innovate from the wholeness of things, which is sharing everyone's different stories about what's really happening. And that means you've got to have an engaged workforce, which is important. why it's important to take a strengths-based approach. You can't innovate from a problem-solving mindset so much, but you innovate. Innovation is about reimagining, not, not, not solving problems. So, so, so if we are in an organization that simply looks to solve problems, we all go back to the status quo. But if we are in an ecosystem which brings, innovation is bringing more strengths and stories into play bringing more strengths and stories into play. So if we can do that, then what happens is when you engage individual stories, they can become engaged because they care then about the topic. So I think those three things are important now. And in a nutshell, that's what I, that's, that's, that's the heart of my work, to coach, equip, to facilitate, to disrupt the conversations in organisations from the problems and the parts and the silos into the, the idea of collaboration at scale. In, in the two rooms, the physical room, bringing people together, and of course, a lot more at the moment, the virtual room, which is the idea of innovating um, by bringing people that you never even knew existed. Yeah. Well, but by, by being connected with them, you're able to draw draw people together to 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 do more at scale. Because the old the old mantra, do more with less. Mm -hmm. Right. The new mantra is do more with more. By tapping into those talents and Definitely. skills and 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 uh, a concept of abundance, not not deficit. So another thing which I think is that when you have all these different people with heterogeneous views, 
you'll get ideas which you couldn't have imagined with a homogeneous kind of group. What do you think about that? <laughs> Well, I'll share you a quick story. I was uh, doing uh, one of my first, um, I guess, uh, uh, facilitations of, of a strengths-based whole system in the room approach was with a trucking company, a freight forwarding company. And and and, and, and they wanted to, so the owners wanted to grow. They wanted to expand. But they usually had just the, the small number of business leaders in the room and in the boardroom, and they wouldn't even imagine bringing the truck drivers into the room, for example, or the forklift drivers. Um, but we persuaded them to do that. So we brought them all into the room. And the topic was, how can we expand to the mainland? Because they're on a small island in Australia, Tasmania. How could they expand to, to the mainland? And one young driver there was a dreamer. He used to dream, and, 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 and people laughed at him. <laughs> because he had crazy ideas. And so he came up with this idea. So they were brainstorming and his group, table group came up and he led it and, and they shared this idea. They said, the way we've got to, um, to, to the mainland is that we have created the world's first truck hover, hovercraft. <laughs> and we sailed across the sea. Wow. Now here's what happened. They, nobody laughed. Nobody laughed that day because they were all on the same page around shifting to imagination, where brainstorming was okay, where everyone's stories mattered. Do you know what? They never, they never created the world's first um, truck hovercraft at that point. What they did do, though, six weeks later, it was buy a shipping company. <laughs> <laughs> and eight years later, they bought the first. Ho- they built the first truck hovercraft. Oh wow. That idea went up long term and actually. Yeah. Now that is innovation. Innovation is the ideas of everybody in the room. And it doesn't always necessarily result in this, but this then leads to that. Yeah. And that only happens by bringing the non usual suspects into the room. Such a wonderful thought out there. Do you have anything further, any further thoughts that you'd like to share with the entire audience? Oh, well, obviously, firstly, stay safe. Uh, stay safe. Care for each other. Take take time out now to really care for each other. Look out for the people who are doing it tough. Look out for ways in which we can engage people. Um, come up with new conversations that do engage. I just wrote a blog um, um, uh, last week on 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 how how to, how to thrive remotely, and I said there's three questions to ask. How how can we be well together now? Um, how can we do well together and how can we innovate together? And I've and I have just in, just been doing some something new for me. I've been doing what I what I call talent uh, equity stock takes with a couple of organizations, taking the time to 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 deploy a piece of very smart digital digital uh, it's a new digital uh, uh, talent uh, platform. Um, and it enables you to do come up with a whole range of insights into people's talents. And so take time out to engage in understanding who we are and to go back to that. And, and, and there will be a time beyond this. Um, but now is a time to, to, to go deeper with people and a time to take some time out to reflect. As, as, as Professor Heifetz says, um, it's time to get off the dance floor and onto the balcony. <laughs> well, thanks a lot for all your insights, Jeremy. I'm sure the audience gained so much from them. Um, and uh, Ingadi Engage will be back with a new episode and a new expert really soon so stay tuned everybody